Well, the, his, the history of mining regulations in Maine most recently uh, starts in 2012, um, at which time uh, Representative John Martin of Eagle Lake in Arista County um, introduced a bill called LD 1853 at pretty much at the behest of the J.D. Irving Company, which owned a tract of land in Bald Mountain in Arista County, which was uh, a parcel of land they were interested in mining. Um, even though they themselves are not a mining company, but they uh, felt uh, inhibited from going ahead with this project because um, of the previous mining regulations, which dated back to 1991. So um, pretty much at J.D. Irving's behest, the Representative Martin introduced a bill um, which would mandate essentially loosening the mining regulations that would make mining permissible in Maine. Um, it was an irregular process. It was introduced at the last minute. It was accompanied by a flurry of uh, uh, pretty expensive lobbying efforts, and it was passed at the last minute by that legislature. Um, uh, as a result, um, the Department of Environmental Protection uh, submitted rules the next year um, um, in compliance with that statute, um, and those rules uh, very much were very much weaker than the previous mining regulations. Um, um, it permitted a lot of things that people found unacceptable in terms of mining on public lands and mining with proximity to public drinking water and uh, mining in terms of how much contamination it would, um, it would cause. There were a lot of um, very worrisome things about those regulations and after a uh, public hearing, which was uh, very lopsidedly um, opposed to those and a lot of lobbying efforts, those regulations were defeated North Maine um, was and uh, remitted back to the Maine, DEP for two years of uh, revision. Um, however, um, neither uh, J.D. Irving nor the, the, nor the forces that would like to pry Maine open for business uh, went away course, and uh, this last year, in 2014, this, the very same mining regulations were um, resubmitted uh, word for word, nothing changed for reconsideration. Um, so again, what happened was the, the very same people and others came out again with the same amount of passion and opposition against those regulations, um, and uh, they are again um, in process of being prepared for submission to the legislature. Along the way, um, um, Representative uh, uh, Ralph Chapman, who's from Brooksville, uh, Maine, which is, the, which is the home of the last Maine that was actively, um, um, that was active in Maine, which is the Callahan Mine, Representative Chapman submitted a bill which was called LD750, um, which had a whole different way of looking at mining regulations. He said, essentially, that um, considering whether um, mining would be too onerous for a mining company um, is uh, probably not the best starting point for sorting out whether a mining regulation was worth it or not. And that's pretty much what the current mining regulations uh, um, are framed by. He said, um, it makes more sense if you're gonna have mining in Maine and you're going to regulate it and you're going to be sensible about it, um, the first thing one should do is sort out how much vulnerability you would be asking of Maine um, to, um, to tolerate. What percent risk of catastrophe, what percent risk of contamination, what percent risk of, of um, damage to Maine's most um, environmentally and economic resource um, are you willing to tolerate? And once you decide that, um, then you can decide what kinds of mining and what mining sites um, are compatible with that kind of risk or incompatible with it. And once you decide that, you can make some mining rules. It was very rational. Um, that bill that was also submitted to the Environmental and Natural Resources Committee, and um, they essentially uh, dismissed it out of hand. Um, and they've kept from that bill actually uh, nothing but the LD number, which is LD750, here's where it gets a little confusing because now the, that committee has gone ahead and is refashioning the mining regulations that were resubmitted um, and pouring them into LD750, 
which makes something of a travesty of Representative Chapman's bill because now it essentially represents everything his bill was submitted as an alternative to. That's kind of where we are. It's a little complicated, but I think I can make it simpler now. Um, um, on May 11th, there's a final public hearing uh, for the public to yet again for the third time, for those that are interested, uh, go to uh, room 216 in the Cross Building in Augusta, the State House, and tell the committee um, just why um, you might be concerned about these regulations. Um, probably what will happen um, after that is that those, uh, regardless of what the committee hears, um, hoping I'm not too cynical about this, but just from past history, if history is a guide and the political composition of the committee is a guide, that um, those regulations will likely pass on a split vote, um, maybe seven to six, maybe um, eight to five. They will then be sent to the legislature sometime, probably the week of May 18th or so. Um, um, it is still very possible to be able to uh, once again reject these regulations and if they are rejecting yet a second time, um, that could actually have more durable consequences. But people should be aware also that the regulations will apply not just to Bald Mountain and Aroostook County, but to all potential mining, uh, mining deposits in Maine, which are many, um, and many of these have the same risks as Bald Mountain in terms of uh, damage to the watershed. So, in, in that sense, um, this issue is in everybody's backyard.